There's a bit of text. Uh, I'm going to bring this up later on the board as well, so you can take it in now, or you can just kind of stare into the world blank blankly, if you like. Uh, can everyone hear me okay? Yep. Um, did anyone see me at BizTech uh, two years ago now, uh, one of the normal meetups uh, talking about AI ethics? Anyone? No? Okay, great. That's even better. Um, so anyone here work with technology, make stuff? Can you put your hands up, right? I mean, there's a few, few people uh, who haven't got their hands up, but m most of us are using technology. Is anyone interested in uh, AI? Right, you're in the, the right room then. Uh, and is anyone using AI right now in their work? A few people, okay, interesting. Cool, um, so what are we talking about? Uh, holistic AI ethics, I think there's a bit of a typo in the, the thing, but it might be, I just changed my mind about it. Um, so there's a lot of uh, think, stuff in the news at the moment about um, AI and ethics and you know, with things like Cambridge Analytica happening, people are becoming um, more wary about technology and we're, with um, AI and things like this being heralded as the next uh, big thing, we should maybe think uh, responsibly about using these tools. Um, so what I'm going to be talking about is um, a little bit of what ethics is, so kind of a bit like a, a, a view into my mind, a bit of a download on um, what I think we're talking about. Um, you might have your own opinions, obviously. Um, we have AI ethics, so how do we apply ethics to AI and um, this technology? Um, holistic AI ethics, so this is just the idea that you might be uh, having a view on this bit of um, the whole kind of gamut, and I'd like to take a little kind of peruse about all those different things that uh, might be interesting to you or might impact you in your technology. Um, a AI ethical guidelines, so this is about how other people are talking about, um, you know, we're going to say that we're going to be really responsible and here's what they're saying and what that actually means and what's good about that. Um, and then AI, AI ethical guidelines, which we'll get to later on, and then any questions. So please like, hold on to all those burning questions until later. We will get to it, I promise. Okay, thanks. Okay, so first of all, who am I? Um, I have been running a podcast called the Machine Ethics Podcast for uh, around about three years now. Um, I'm on episode 25. Um, it's all about talking to really uh, much cleverer people than me about AI. Um, so these are business leaders, these are de uh, developers, um, academics, uh, authors about the impact of AI. So, you know, talking about these systems and going, you know, how do these things work? Uh, what are the implications of that? Uh, and talking about all this great stuff like data bias and all that sort of thing, which I'm sure you're kind of all up on. Um, oh, yeah, and I've also started a consultancy recently um, with a few people uh, getting together with different kinds of skills who can help um, come in and make your uh, service or product more responsible. Um, if you want to put it into business terms, um, then it might be uh, due diligence plus or kind of a risk assessment on this technology. Uh, but really, it's all about ethics, right? Okay, ethics. What's, what's ethics, everyone? Um, I know it's an open question, right? Um, so I like to think of it as this idea that um, if we were in a, in a void, right, we wouldn't have to necessarily think about uh, what's good and bad. We could just do stuff, and it wouldn't impact anyone, so who cares? Um, but if we were living in a society that we care about how people behave and, and what impacts us, then we have to have some sort of normative standard of cohesion, some sort of cultural structure. And this is kind of what we mean when we're talking about ethics. It's like, can we anticipate um, what someone's next move is going to be? Um, you know, I'm presuming you're not going to all murder me now. You know, that's kind of a contract that we have together. That's kind of part of our uh, moral thinking together as a culture. Uh, and these sorts of things are, are useful. So it's not really about what's good and bad. It's about how we can structure uh, an agreement about what's good and bad together, right? Um, so sometimes uh, when we're talking about things that are ethical, it can be conflated to just meaning good. And good is kind of a, you know, it's a, it's a very um, subjective uh, opinion what is good, right? So when we're talking about ethics, like I was saying before, good is not really good enough. What we really want is some sort of framework, some sort of you know, contract that we have together, some sort of way of logically working through, you know, when you say ethical, what you actually mean is you're not going to murder me, or you're not going to do certain things, or you are going to do certain things in different circumstances. So good, um, especially in a technological circumstance where we're talking about um, ones and zeros, bits, um, good is not really good enough. 
you know, if, if this is what you all mean when you're talking about ethical things, you know, we're not really talking about the same thing. Um, it lacks uh, rationality, specificity, reproducibility, these things that are important to technology. Uh, so why do we need AI ethics? I'm sure you can all answer this. Um, so it's, all, it's about um, AI autonomous systems, you know. Um, how can we deal with these autonomous systems? How should we feel about them? How do we know, like, this ethical contract with them that they're not going to do um, nefarious things to us? Um, and here's some examples, right? Um, so an AI might tell you what to say. It might tell you what to buy. Um, it's being used to maybe apply your money somewhere, somehow. Uh, maybe send you to jail, right? So all of these things have, uh, I would say, moralistic impact on individuals and society as a whole. Um, behavior changes um, and also emotional, cultural changes, all these sorts of things uh, are, are really interesting. <clears throat> we also have um, hundreds of other examples, um, like robots, automated cars, human interface. Um, so all these things uh, come into effect. And um, what I'm talking about here is AI ethics, but really some of this stuff can come into kind of general technology ethics as well. Um, so here are some uh, lovely people saying nice things. Uh, it is impossible to work in information technology without also engaging social engineering. Yeah. Make sense? You can disagree with me later. Um, ethics must become a central piece for any individual or organization developing AI. Um, so this is um, Digital Catapult, quasi-governmental uh, body. Um, I think this is really um, of the now, right? So when we're talking about using these, Im uh, implementing these AI systems and, and changing people's behaviors and, and telling them what to text and what to buy and things like that, um, we must be mindful of ethics um, as we're doing it. Um, so why uh, holistic um, AI ethics? Mainly because I think it's really interesting. I just think that people are kind of like talking about this one thing over here when actually we, we've got all this other really cool stuff that we should be thinking about as well. So what is that, some of the cool stuff that I first um, got captivated for? So when I started the podcast, I was really talking about these things. I don't know if you've heard of any of these, uh, but these are kind of areas of interest within um, kind of philosophy almost. And some of them really impact us now, and some of them are going to become more so. So robo-ethics is really about how we should think about where we apply automation. So should we apply uh, robotic, um, you know, killing machines like drones and all sorts of things like this? You know, how should we feel about that? Should we do that? Shouldn't we do that? That's the, the kind of philosophy around, um, you know, should we take all our jobs away? You know, that sort of thing. So robo-ethics is really uh, talking about, you know, how should we apply this technology? Machine ethics is where I, I came in originally, which I thought was... Um, Really, really interesting uh, as a technological problem, you know, how can we make machines that have ethical agency? You know, if there is a, um, a machine that is working, operating in a space where it has to make a split second decision and a human person is never going to be able to step in in time, what decision is it going to make? Is that decision in line with what we want it to do and how can we make that so? And is there any um, kind of area of expertise that will make that always the case. So this is really, um, I mean, I've kind of give you a little slant here, but um, these things become more kind of future facing. Um, but I think uh, the robo ethics and the machine ethics are going to become more important. And then the theory of mind really is uh, talking about, um, you know, neuroscience and things like that. How, how do we know our own mind? We don't really know the makeup completely of our own minds. How is it that we can find um, when we've created an artificial mind, you know. So that's a really interesting um, area of um, philosophy as well. How is it we'll know when we've created some sort of uh, artificial being, you know? Is there a good way of finding out? I don't know. I don't actually know the answer to that one. Uh, I have opinions about the other things. Um, so there's some images about what I'm talking about. So like care robots and things like that come under this heading of uh, machine ethics. So um, trying to imbue some sort of um, uh, algorithmic uh, ethical agency in, in some of these systems. Um, you know, robots, um, quite um, <laughs> scary looking things that we might associate with um, the army and things like that. And then um, I couldn't really find a good theory of mind image. So um, I picked out the uh, Mechanical Turk, um, hoping you're all kind of somewhat familiar with Mechanical Turk. Yeah? 
Yeah, so really, how are we going to know if there's anyone in there? You know, that's the idea. You know, if, there, if, there's, if the box is empty and there's no one pulling the strings, can we say it's intelligent? Can we say it's a living being? Um, you know, how are we going to feel about that? Uh, again, I can talk more about that at the end if you like. Um, so what's everyone else talking about? <coughs> really, no one's talking about these things. This is like the realm of academia. Um, I'm, I'm talking about them with um, people on the podcast because I think it's interesting. Uh, but really, people are talking about um, these things. You know, how does it impact my business? Um, what design decisions do I need to make when applying this technology? Uh, what, where does the data come from? What's the provenance of that data? Uh, what technologies are we going to use? How does that technology affect our product? Um, and all these other things to do with um, uptime and you know, really practical stuff. Um, so what you could do is put at the end of here, uh, business ethics, design ethics, data ethics. But actually, we're also just really talking about decision making. You know, the decisions that we make in business um, affect our tools. So if you, you know, had a startup and you sold it five years down the road, what are they going to do with your AI technology? All that data you scraped from your users, what are they going to do with that? I mean, these are really prescient questions. Um, uh, the design side of things, you know. Um, oh, actually, I can click along. Yes, good. Um, so the design things, you know, um, are we going to keep designing things to steal people's uh, time and attention? Are we going to keep doing that? You know, these are kind of ethical questions, right? Um, more eyeballs on more adverts. Are we going to keep doing that, guys? I don't know. Um, there's obviously other examples about that. Um, data, you know, are we going to make sure that we are uh, conscious of, you know, how the data has got to us? Um, maybe you got the data from a third party, you know, can we query the third party about the provenance of the data? Um, if you've done questionnaires, things like that, you know, have you been responsible in the way you collect that data? Um, and there's a lot in GDPR, obviously, about consent and all these sorts of things. Um, so that's kind of like a huge area. And I feel like a lot of people are talking about that specific part. Um, but I'd like them to talk about the rest as well. Um, and then the technology, like the specifics of, like I was saying before, um, how you implement it, how's it going to work, how's it going to scale, all these questions. Um, so here we go. Um, these are the ethical guidelines. So if you were going to come across this subject and go, in my business, I need to put together some ethical guidelines, you could uh, be in good company and look up some ethical guidelines that uh, over the last year or so, different companies put together. Companies like IBM, Google, DeepMind, uh, Nesta, IEEE, um, AI Now, um, the Future of Life Institute, and uh, Digital Catapult, and many more. Um, I've been doing a bit of research trawling through these, uh, so you don't have to, basically. So, right, good. Um, OK, so they've all got names like this. Uh, they haven't got names like this, um, which I think is interesting. I think I might, if I made some, I might make it the tenants of Ben Byford or something, the five laws of robotics, whatever you like. Um, so I've kind of digested some of that information over the last two months in the preparation for this talk. Um, it's kind of a quick look. So I'm, I'm formulating a longer form talk, kind of deep diving into what does this all mean? Can we um, take some of this into our own business and um, super useful kind of practical sort of thing? I'm not there yet. So you're going to have to kind of gleam what you can um, in the meantime. Um, so. What's really good about what people are saying, I think, um, avoid creating and reinforcing, uh, reinforcing unfair bias. Does that make sense? Yep. So there's lots to talk about um, how if you have bias, um, biased data, then you inherently have a, a biased algorithm, right? That makes sense. Um, things like applying this to, there's a company, no, there's not a company, there's a, a program called Co Compass in the States that was taking historical data for, um, people committing crimes and applying it to making judgments about bail. Um, and that, in, in a sense, isn't a bad thing, necessarily. Um, but when you apply it verbatim to decision making and helping people make decisions, you're inferring a, a kind of a notion about the world. And this notion about the world was that maybe, uh, you know, people with darker skin were, were going to commit more crimes and people uh, with lighter skin weren't. So, 
I think we have to use these tools delicately and understand what the world we want to live in looks like. So what I would have said in that instance is that there was a design problem that got missed there where they could have looked at that data and gone into certain neighborhoods because it was actually to do postcodes um, and, and find, found out what was going on in those neighborhoods and, and made a change. Only collect what you need. This is great. This is like a Silicon Valley like punch in the face. Like, don't collect all our data. Just give us the service you know, with the data that you need. Cool. Um, oh, too fast. Uh, monitor after the release of systems. I think this is really interesting. I mean, a lot of us probably have systems that we run, and we have to do some sort of monitoring. But it's also interesting that they're pulling out that we should be monitoring our users, our, the people that it affects. So, you know, how is it affecting the people that um, are using these tools? Can we monitor them as well? Um, do some of the benefits of your solution include democratizing AI. Actually, these last three are kind of um, somewhat similar in you made this really cool tool. Can anyone else use it? Is it useful in any other remit? Um, are you able to give some of that stuff away to kind of help us generally? You know, I think that's quite an interesting idea that's being put forward. Um, so if you're going to read any of these, these are the ones that I would suggest you read uh, today. Um, it's not to say that the rest are rubbish. Just um, these are the best ones I found for overall kind of practicality and um, understanding. Okay, um, I can show these uh, slides later, actually, if you want. Um, it's actually on this, um, you can see at the top in the bar, it's slides.com forward slash Ben Byford forward slash holistic AI ethics. So you can actually just go to that URL. <coughs> um, the common, so these are things that they all seem to be talking about. Um, so transparency, where an algorithm is being deployed, uh, this seems reasonable to me. So if you're uh, deploying a chatbot or something like that, um, tell people. You know, I'm, I'm uh, Benbot. I'm not posing as a human being, and that and that affects how people interact with it and um, how people feel about it as well. Um, diverse teams, obviously, a good one. I think this is um, it's been echoed throughout most of these guidelines that we should, if we don't have diverse teams, we should get diverse teams, or we should talk to lots of people to make our assumptions diverse. Okay. Um, also, I'm not mandating any of this stuff, just to say. I'm just saying that it's all interesting, OK? Um, so you know, I, as much as I love you to go away and like, download this stuff into your work time, um, I'm not like, you know, going to tell you off or anything. Um, data consent. Um, this is an obvious one, which leads me to the meh. So a lot of this uh, meh is stuff that we should know. Um, so data consent, users should be in control of their data. Well, of course they should. It's in the law, right? So GDPR came in, and they're basically saying that we should look after people's data, um, and if you don't, we'll, you know, you'll get fined. So really, we shouldn't be talking about this anymore. We should just be doing it. Uh, respect human rights, I feel similarly about. If you're not respecting human rights, then what are you doing? You know? Um, dedicated insurance and taking action licenses. I think these are really like, interesting ideas. Um, so you can imagine if you had like, a little robot it might have a, uh, a license to um, take an action. And that action might be to phone its home server and tell it's what it's seeing, or to move around, or these sorts of things. Uh, and I like, it's a kind of interesting idea, but I don't think it's practical in any sense. So I think um, some of the guys at Bath University are doing a lot of uh, work on how we can make these machines more transparent to people, so in the decision making and also in the action taking. So I think that's probably a better solution to that, uh, but interesting anyway. Um, so what aren't people talking about? Uh, people aren't really <coughs> taking into account uninspected <coughs> consequences. Uh, so downtime, when things break, uh, code people, right? Um, bugs happen. Um, how do we handle some of that unintended consequence with a system, especially if it's a large system, especially if you're rolling out um, new autocorrect or you know, something that's going to be in lots of people's hands. How can you handle some unintended consequences? Um, and, and this is it's problematic because it's going to be different uh, depending on what you're working with. Um, so the specifics of the technology, no one's talking about that. I think that's hilarious that no one's talking about um, applying ethics to technology. They're just kind of making opinions, in my mind. Um, and remember, ethics is a logical framework of, you know, being able to work together. Um, specifics. 
of generalized ethical framework based on logical reasoning. What I just said, uh, no recommendations for legislation. No one wants to be um, putting this in law. I just think that's interesting as well. Yeah. So no one's talking about more legislation. Um, I'm agnostic to that. I, don't, I think if we had some really good legislation, uh, clever people, maybe that will make a difference. It's, in my mind, this sort of stuff is kind of telling the populace, you know, it's kind of leading them, we want more of this stuff. So I don't know if legislation is all bad, um, but, or maybe we just need to be told uh, culturally better how to deal with some of this technology. Um, so I showed you some um, words at the beginning. I thought I'd put my money where my mouth is somewhat, and run all these um, guides, these ethical frameworks, uh, through an AI, right? Through a couple of neural networks. And I got some stuff out. So this is the code. Um, you can download it on GitHub. I am not a specialist, so it's not terribly great. But I was super pleased to get something useful out of it, uh, which looks like this. <coughs> Um, so I think I think these are all really, really really good. Like, does your company communicate clearly and honestly? You know, does it? Should you be doing more? Can you uh, communicate the failures of your product, the edge cases of your product, maybe some pitfalls of using your product? Um, good AI. <laughs> It can can be promoting public good, for example, in education, housing, all those sorts of things. I know this kind of talk sounds a bit like a um, crushing AI is bad sort of thing, <laughs> but uh, as the frameworks are pointing out, um, it's it's really useful technology. It's really great to make correlations, to find biases, and to use that um, where humans are just no good at um, processing all that data. So I'm not saying it's inherently bad, but I think some people uh, could be doing a better job at it. OK, so. Yep, so this um, Anderson and Anderson are two academics who are working on the kind of machine ethics side. And there's lots of kind of speculation about this sort of thing, but um, the the algorithms don't really, well, uh, hopefully, won't suffer from um, kind of nepotism. They won't be drunk. Um, they won't um, have issues, um, you know, cross-culturally. Um, so really, we're learning a lot about ourselves in this project of um, ethical reasoning. And also, we could maybe one day have something which is far more ethical than we could ever be. <coughs> Um, so that's a good quote. Um, I realize I kind of rattled through this, so we've got loads of time for um, questions. Uh, and I've got a few extra um, credit slides. Um, my last point, uh, which I will stress, is this is the, re the remit of everyone. Uh, anyone who's touching technology, design technology, making decisions about technology use, researching it, you are all impacting everyone's lives. And you don't necessarily think you are. You're just a developer. You're just a designer. It's no longer good enough, in the words of um, Projects by If. Um, you really have to start considering the impact of this technology on the world. And hopefully, it will be good. Cool. Thank you. Thanks so much, Ben. Um, so we have some time for questions. Yeah, if you have a question, can you give me time to bring a microphone to you? It's one in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? I tried to meet him halfway. <laughs> uh, I'm very tired, so I wrote this down uh, so I won't forget. Um, what do you think about the growing use of automation and uh, our responsibility as humans to perhaps limit the use of technology to prevent harm to humans? Um, I think 
I mean, personally, I think we have a tendency towards automation. I think we have a tendency to discover and manipulate the world and tools. You know, the first thing that de defined us between apes and, and humanoid uh, beings that we are today is, is manipulating the world, tools, and, and creating things which are, you know, not ourselves. So I think, um, I think it's not inherently bad, and I think um, we should probably stop saying that it's bad. I think automation is good. Um, well, it, it can, can be positive. Um, and we have to kind of change our structure of, of uh, society to incorporate it, I think. Yeah. <laughs> One here. <coughs> Hi there. Um, do you think it's um, heading us towards supporting our current belief systems, or do you think it will help us transcend into a higher system thinking uh, consciousness? Yeah. Well, our current um, our current way of thinking is diverse and is cultural. Um, so I think uh, it will always be that. I think um, you can't get around the fact that we are cultural beings. And therefore, the, the way that we think ethically or morally about things will, will incorporate some of that stuff. And obviously, um, our culture changes over time, so those things will change. Um, I think the, the problem with some of this technology is that it can be dogmatic. So I think we also have to think about how the technology changes with us. And if we don't do that, then we're going to have serious troubles. Yeah. Uh, but my question is, yeah. uh, is it showing signs towards that uh, promotion of dogmaticness? Or um, I think we're early doors. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think um, I don't know yet. I don't. There's there's, there's been uh, big human errors um, in how this stuff's been implemented, but I don't know if that's a trend. Basically, um, I'm positive about it. Yeah. Uh, there's one up there. Yeah, well, thank you for your very interesting talk. Uh, mm -hmm. You've talked very kind of generally and globally. Yeah. You haven't gone into like specific geographic regions. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I, I think China has got a very different attitude to how it collects data and how it regulates that. And yep. the United States or Silicon Valley also has a different value. Yep. And the EU has been a leader in terms of like GDPR plus other moves to kind of regulate. Could you uh, add anything on that? Yeah, I think you're conflating law as ethical frameworks. So I think uh, the law, uh, the differences in the, the cultural differences and, and the legislative differences in these countries are interesting. But really, we should be doing better than that anyway. Yeah, okay. uh, These laws are there as a last stop um, before the road of trouble. Um, that's what laws are about. They're, they're a hard block. Really, we've got all this before we get to that law. So we need to, before we get there, you know, hopefully we won't need to legislate, like I was saying before, um, severely on this technology, um, because we'll be doing things properly. Okay, but 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 before you get even to the mm. laws bit, I yep. mean, different attitudes, business practices, procedures yep. do seem to vary, and attitudes from different different parts of the world and different yep. uh, parts of society. Yeah, yeah. I mean. Um, uh, it's going to be easier when we have, because um, we have a, a global internet, right? We have, we have things that are connected and that work together. So I don't think it's an impossible project. Okay. Um, and we're talking about technology, so we are talking about interoperable things. Um, what we have to understand is, you know, is our thing that's going to operate over in China going to then not going to be OK in the UK? And I think we haven't quite got to that problem space, but that's the, that's the space we're living in now, you know? That's, that's what we're going to get to when we have um, a large populace being looked after by you know, some sort of care operative, um, that sort of thing. So it's, it's, it's of the here and now. And I would say that we have to think more globally about how we deal with that. Yeah, thank, thank you. you for the question. Yeah. Okay, so this is actually kind of continuing a little bit on from that question. It's similar, mm -hmm. but I wanted to sort of get your more opinion on this because mm -hmm. you were talking about kind of ethics and you sort of treated ethics as if there was a sort of agreed opinion. And actually, mm -hmm. I think that's one of those things which you sort of slightly brushed over. If you mm -hmm. pose something like the trolley question to this room, you probably get about hundreds of different answers about how, to how people would actually want to respond to it. Yep. And 
I sort of consider this maybe more concretely. You have the sort of Zuckerbergs of the world who have presented quite, well, alarming to some people views on things like privacy. And he seems like Mark Zuckerberg, for example, doesn't seem to care too much about privacy at all and yet and thinks that we probably should be doing away with it. That's what he considers to be an ethical decision. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting as well that you sort of say that you think that legislation should be a sort of a, sort of a last step. Mm -hmm. What do you think prevents this uh, a future from, like, are you optimistic about this? Like, what's to stop a world becoming very much like a might makes right, as in the people who are the richest get to make the ethical decisions, and that's it? Yeah, um, I think this is um, one of ja uh, Jaron Lernier's um, big things. You know, um, we are increasing the, the amount of people, uh, well, reducing the amount of people who have the most power, essentially using some of this technology. Um, so I think you're right. I think there are places where maybe legislation can play a role, um, but we, we have to have an open debate about, you know, what is the world we want to live in. And if we have more automation, you know, we're going to have less jobs or, or the jobs are going to be changed. So it's not really just a privacy consideration. We're fooling ourselves to think that that's the case. We have a, we have a changing world which has lots of problems um, and, and the privacy issue is one of them. Um, I think culturally we can do a lot. Um, I don't see a lot of this stuff in film or television. So, you know, education, things like that. Um, in my mind, we should be teaching all computer scientists um, and all people really more about ethical thinking. Um, really, we don't have to call it ethical thinking if you don't want to. It's just about you know, learning how to maybe make uh, decisions about projects that we're working on. You know, we can frame it however we like, but really we want to be um, moving in the direction we want to see the world in the future. Um, I don't know if I... Uh, can agree or disagree with Mark Zuckerberg. Um, there's obviously a big, you know, backfire about it. But if you look back, maybe uh, ten years ago, uh, you know, this wasn't a problem. So things change, and culturally, we think differently about these things. And you know, Facebook wasn't a, a huge uh, global entity trying to give people the internet and things like that um, back then. Uh, so obviously, that's changed as well. Um, but in my world, oh, sorry. Um, it would be nice to start from a place of uh, ethical consideration before we even make the Facebook, you know, that sort of thing. Sorry, just to follow on. I only yep. brought up sort of Facebook because it was like a concrete example. Yes. I'm sort yeah. of thinking much more practically moving forwards if we consider things like robotics dealing with like heavier systems. Yeah. I mean, the one that gets talked about and is often kind of brushed aside when you talk to like people who are working in sort of automation mm -hmm. is things like the trolley problem and autonomous cars. And it's, it's just kind of interesting that you, the sort of your view that you have, I know it's a big one. Okay, so I, d I didn't really, oh, do I have a, oh no, so this, this is the slide for that. Uh, that's annoying, isn't it? Um, okay, oh no, that, there it is. Okay, that's the slide for that. Okay, so, God, I really didn't want to get into this. Um, thanks, you. Um, the trolley problem is a thought experiment, okay? That's pretty much what we have to say about that. It tells us how culturally we think about these, uh, the ins and outs of these circumstances. How often are you in this circumstance where you have a decision to make like this? You know, it doesn't really exist, okay? Um, what I'm saying about the trolley problem is that people are captivated by this idea that at some point a machine is going to have to make a decision, and I'm not really disputing that fact. What I am disputing is that there's a, a, a ton load of other stuff before we get to that, that specific decision to make. So really what we want to do is make it um, a, a million times safer than normal human uh, operation before we even have to concretely make any decisions at all. And how we make that decision is, is really in the, in the field of machine ethics. And um, we can think about it culturally, but really, I like to think about it logically. You know, logically, what are we going to do here, guys? You know, what is, again, the society that we want to live in? What are we going to um, implant here for that future to exist? And are we just going to ask everyone in the room and not get anywhere, like you were saying? So I think there is, um, you know, there is a question to ask about um, how we react culturally. But we also have to make a decision at some point, uh, and someone has to make that decision. And I'm really interested in this issue. But it's an issue which has so much before it, it's unbelievable. <laughs> OK? Um, so that's my two, two cents on uh, the trolley problem. What was the, did you say something the, before The that thing that's well? going to follow on is that it seems yeah. like 
I'll, this is the last thing I'll say because I realize I'm hogging the mic here, yep. um, is that surely it seems like legislation is going to be half the way that we deal with this because um, who is responsible for the, for the accident of a car? Is it the owner? Yep. Is it the company? Yep. This is like a political and legislative yeah. decision. This, this, th that's very true, and I think that's the least interesting uh, part of that yeah. whole situation. <laughs> no, no, just not like to shoot you down, but like uh, that is like when we get to having an accident, whose fault is it? Who's going to pay the money? Blah 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 blah. Like we have to deal with this constantly, and I don't, I don't, really, I'm not really concerned with lawyers. That's fine, but before we get to having any crashes whatsoever, what is the technology doing? And that's what I'm concerned with. When we get to the crashes, we're going to have to have some way of dealing with that. Um, and, and that's just not really what I want to be talking about and, and dealing with, because there will be other frameworks. But what technologically are we going to do before then? Yes? Yeah, sorry. If this is all going to be about trolley problem, I'm, we're going to end, OK? <laughs> I'll count you on that. One. Yep. Money makes the world go round. So with the car one mm -hmm. in particular, who should we? If that car is approaching a person, whose life should it be saving? Because someone at some point is going to go. I bought this car, so it's going to save my life. Yeah, but did so they buy that car? That's not the, the world we're going to live in. Cars. So I bought this car. Yeah, I, I to save my life over the person in the street. I have very strong views about this. I don't know if you've like I'm exuding that. No. Um, <laughs> But it is basically not going to work if you own that car. It just won't work. So the, there's going to be a really messy step between now and um, full automated roads. And I feel like that's the only way to go. But in between, we're going to have you know, something that you're alluding to here about you know, um, who should we be caring about, who owns things, um, you know, is there different companies dealing with different car systems, all this sort of stuff. And it's super messy. And um, I'm hopefully going to be dealing with someone who is dealing with the simulation of all that messiness and making ethical uh, decisions on that m simulated mess. Um, but really, in an ideal world, we'd have one automated car system, and we would use it like a taxi. And we would just hail one, and we would get in. And we wouldn't have this issue, because we don't actually own it. Um, and again, the ownership, legislative, like um, liability problem isn't something that I'm really interested in. But there are uh, loads of great people I've interviewed on the podcast who are dealing with that stuff at the moment. But the legislation is what makes us how we do things every day. Mm, I disagree. Well, we've got laws. <laughs> so, so the yeah, yeah, but before the laws, like I was saying before, we, we interoperate, you know. Th that we don't, uh, there's no law to say that I need to talk to any of you guys, for okay, instance. That, that, there was yeah. no law before GDPR, so is Mark yeah. Zuckerberg that bad by stealing, the, taking a lot of data and then learning from it that we've now made a decision at the back of it? So yeah. are we allowed to accept but messiness? At what point does messiness not become messiness and then becomes a law? Well, I think it's subjective um, about the Mark Zuckerberg stuff. Again, I don't, I don't actually, I haven't spent a lot of time reading into, you know, what's going on there. Um, I'm more interested in... Um, the ethical side of how we implement code and how we feel about the implementation of code um, and problems like this. Yeah, so the problems of business leaders is, is super interesting, um, but we are all going to have to deal with that culturally. Mm. Yeah, thanks. I just want to say that I understand your point that law is kind of a last measure and that you'd like it if people culturally mm. understood what is ethical without being forced to do it, because mm -hmm. law is, a, is ultimately enforced via violence. If you don't follow the law, we will put you in jail. That is the end of law. Yeah, or fine you, or whatever it is. I thought that it was really interesting. Um, I was talking to a, a lawyer on the podcast, actually, and they were saying that in the UK, this is like last year, in the UK, we're miles ahead of some countries because we have no laws against using uh, the road, right? So there was no specific laws saying that we should not be able to have a, a dri driver driving in a car. There was no specific laws that said we couldn't do that. Um, so actually, we were having um, the testing automated vehicles on normal roads um, last year, you know, or the year before that, that, because technically there's nothing to say that we couldn't. Um, they're all kind of uh, common law, effectively. They're all set in uh, precedent and not hard, um, hard guidelines. Uh, if legislation is the mm. final stop for this, 
Yeah. Um, ah. Would you what do you think of the idea that venture capital is the initiator of a lot of the bad practice? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Interesting. 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 Uh, no, I think bad practice comes from uh, from people making stupid things, right? Um, you don't. I could make uh, all sorts of horrible things and, and not get venture capitalism, uh, venture capitalist involved. Um, so I think, um, yeah, I mean the money does help, right? Um, but you know, I could, you know, unleash, you know, I could make something AI based and unleash it without, you know, just a bit of time, to be honest. So I think it needs to happen before that. Um, but yeah, I mean, some of the stuff that we're doing with ethical by design is um, doing due diligence on investment. Yep. Hi, Ben, no it's done. Dawn here. Um, Hi. Hi, Dawn. Hi. Um, I just want to go back to the legislation question, sorry. Yep. Oh. Um, ultimately, this is a human rights issue, and we do have um, legislation for human rights. And I think that... Um, sorry, I'm a bit breathy. Yep. Um, this is all happening so fast, mm -hmm. and uh, companies are not going to do things, do the right things on their own, unfortunately. I'd love them to, but they're not going to. We're going to help them. It's fine. I know we're going to yeah. help them, but <laughs> <laughs> this is happening too fast, and I do think we do need legislation. I think legislation is going to happen okay. whether we like it or not. Um, and I think if we, if we pin it on the human rights issue, then I think maybe things will... There is stuff going on. I yep. can send it to you. But, um, yeah, 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 do that. I think, I think the human rights angle is really interesting. Like, if you step back and be more generalised about it, human rights is like a construct, right? So we've decided that human rights is interesting, that we should all do these things. And not everyone in the world actually agrees with these human rights, which is a problem that we have. Um, it's kind of like an ethical framework that we all agree on. And that's, you know, it's super useful for that. Um, what it isn't useful is telling machines what uh, freedom is. Like, Actually, human rights is useless uh, in, in, in computing, but it's useful when we look at it and understand that and reflect on what our kind of uh, requirement is to our other human beings that we can have something to look at. So really, it's not going to help us with the technology, but it is going to help us implement stuff. Um, that's my view. Um, if anyone has a computable version of human rights, then let me know. Uh, ben Byford. Uh, here we go. <coughs> Thanks. Oh. Yeah, we got one more. Yeah. Uh, so, just on you were saying a minute ago, and mm. ethical bias in mm. systems. Yep. How do you work towards removing uh, any bias from the implementation of an algorithm? So we're having this problem at the moment mm -hmm. that we're hiring a lot of people from different sexualities, diversities, religions. Uh, Anything to think of to yep. try and work on our algorithm to remove that bias because of the impact of what's going to happen. Yep. So how do you approach it in regards to know you've got enough people's bias in the software to remove the bias from the software? So are you, are you referring to the team or are you referring to the data going into the algorithm? Both. Both. Um, OK, well, there's slightly different issues. So um, data bias in the machine isn't necessarily a bad thing if you didn't have any data bias. Um, you wouldn't have a product, like you wouldn't do anything, it would give you garbage. Um, so you, what you're looking for is um, what everyone th is thinking about as bias is un, you know, bias we don't want, you know, wrong bias or um, bias based on you know, um, issues within the data. Um, but bias essentially is how it works. So it's just one of those boring kind of technological things. Um, so I think as a data scientist, you have to be aware of all these things. Um, and if you're just verbatim making things without having any data science background or, or having an interest in it, then, then maybe you're on a knife's edge there. Um, there are good ways of cleaning your data. There are good ways of checking where your data is coming from, um, what that data might have. And um, what I was saying about the example with the, the, um, the jailing in, in the States is actually Finding bias in data isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's what you do with that afterwards. So if you're finding that you have a system that you know, is prejudiced in some way, then why is that? You know, can we do something there to unprejudice our system, to you know, focus on the future we want to see? Um, but also, uh, can we actually impact the world uh, in a different way as well, uh, or make a different design implementation? Um, diverse teams, I think there's, the, the guidelines are interesting diverse teams, but I don't think there's a yardstick for what that means. 
Um, for me, it's impossible to make that assumption because, you know, if you're a startup and there's a team of three of you, four of you, five of you, you know, how are you going to make that diversity happen? Um, is, is is a tough question, and I would say probably do some reading, but obviously if you're interested in UX at all, then you're probably talking to the people that you're going to be putting this in the hands of, and that should be a diverse number of people, because a lot of different types of people are going to be using your product, probably, unless you're some sort of crazy KKK, like, app or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, <laughs> trying to, like, muster up some example in my brain. Um, you're going to be impacting society as a whole, so you should be talking to it. So we, we've um, probably got time for one more question. Um, it's going to be a good one, no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Um, I'm kind of struggling to formulate this, but uh, um, mm. I mean, we are we're sort of relational beings, right? We relate to each other. Mm -hmm. um, and all of the focus of the talk, uh, it's a fascinating area, and it's a brilliant talk. The, the, mm. But the focus that I'm seeing is about these algorithms, sort of learning and being unbiased and all that kind of stuff. Mm. Um, there's nothing about us actually relating to these things that are affecting our lives. Um, and I guess that's probably because we're, we're, we're at the start of this whole sort of AI thing. Um, at some point, are these entities going to have rights? Are they going to...? Yeah. Um, so uh, let's go back. Um, so somewhat in this slide, when I was talking about um, theory of mind um, and my, my brain somewhere, uh, uh, where is it? There is actually a picture of my brain somewhere in this. There you go. That's my brain. Cool, right? <laughs> if anyone wants to download that and work out what's going on at the time, I don't know. Um, so, I mean, people are talking about this stuff. This is, this is science fiction. Um, this has been talked about for aeons. You know, the first inception of, of robotics, they were re relatable. You know, they weren't empty shells of things, necessarily. They were things which um, people personified. And the problem we have really at the moment, uh, which is uh, I'm actually lacking a, a psychologist in our merry team of um, ethical by design people. Um, I'm interested in this area, but I don't have a, a big background in it. But we have a tendency towards personification of anything, let alone things which are slightly cleverer than a brick. You know, so if you put goggly eyes on, you know, <laughs> almost anything, and made it make a noise, then you're going to have some sort of relatable thing going on in your brain. That's just kind of how we operate. So when I was talking about uh, chatbots and, and making it, uh, people aware that it's a bot, that's that's useful for those circumstances. You know, making people aware of the capabilities of, of a system is going to make them relate in a different way to it. Um, if they are, if you're blinding people to the reality of the situation, then they're going to psychologically react very differently. Um, the European Union are talking about e-personhood. I think this is total rubbish, uh, ridiculous and nonsense. Um, probably by people who don't really know anything about technology. Um, this is pretty damning stuff, isn't it? But um, <laughs> I'm sorry, everyone. Um, uh, but that's just not where we are right now. Um, I don't know if you've, like, some people do work with these algorithms in this room, and th there's just not anything like um, relatable human interaction right now. Um, so I'm not concerned with it, but there will be a concern at some point that that will become the case, and we need to get ahead of the curve, and hopefully how we react to things psychologically will help us. Um, so I'm, I'm interested in talking to those people. Cool. Thank you very much. <laughs>